Most people assume that today's song from one of the biggest bands ever was a number one hit because it's such a classic radio standard. It's played all the time. In reality, it missed the charts entirely. That's because it was never actually released as a single, surprisingly. The song has quite a history from the band having no budget for recording, which only gave the singer a few takes in the studio, I think two, to try to nail down the vocal with a renowned orchestra playing behind him. He had to do it with the orchestra, <laughs> no pressure. But the song would have its revenge, as it were, as it appeared on a future album and was a big reason why that album would sell 40 million copies. The story's coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you remember carefully tuning your radio dial to get your favorite station without static, you're gonna dig this channel of musical nostalgia. Make sure that you subscribe below right now. I know you'll dig it, uh, what we do here. We have interviews all the time. We also have a Patreon you're gonna wanna check out. You'll find an additional catalog of exclusive content there. You can also become an honorary producer to help keep the music alive. That's what it's about. So it's time for another edition of our series, The New Standards. This is a show that takes an in-depth look into songs that transcend genre, decade, and fads. I mean, songs that are monumental touchstones in our culture and within our society. Previous episodes, we've covered Sundown by the great Gordon Lightfoot, Cats in the Cradle by Harry Chapin, and Dreams by Fleetwood Mac, amongst others. Sundown, you better take care. But today, we're going to break down a timeless classic from a band who really has like half a dozen new standards, it seems like. The band is Eagles. Uh, and the song, The Great Desperado. Desperado. Why don't it's from the band's sophomore LP of the same name. This one's a classic rock staple for sure, but it didn't start out that way. Going back for a brief primer, the Eagles were clear front runners in that 1970s California sound. Leaders of a burgeoning country rock movement. The band was originally made up of guitarist Glenn Fry and Bernie Ledden, bassist Randy Meisner and uh, drummer Don Henley. Previously, Glenn Fry had played with Bob Seger and J.D. Souther, Ledden, the Flying Burrito Brothers, and uh, Dillard Clark, Meisner with Poco and Ricky Nelson, and then Don Henley with Shiloh. So by the time they formed the Eagles, or Eagles, I mean, these musicians were already an accomplished group of uh, players. And actually before forming Eagles, they played together as Linda Rodstadt's uh, backup band for her 1972 self-titled album. But Don Henley and Glenn Fry were driven to take things to the next level. So they stepped out of Ronstadt's uh, shadow, as it were, and recruited Meisner and Ledden to join them. Together, the foursome signed a deal with David Geffen's Asylum label, and they got to work recording their self-titled record that happened in London. Led by famed producer Glenn Johns, Eagles took flight in the studio, creating a groundbreaking mix of country rock songs. Eagles, the album, that would ultimately go platinum and feature three U.S. Top 25 singles, Take It Easy, A Witchy Woman, and Peaceful Easy Feeling. Easy, take it easy. For their follow-up, Desperado, these new kids in town, sorry, <laughs> they returned to England once again in the winter of 72. There they reunited with Glenn Johns, who actually saw the band as more country than rock. He loved the country and view sound of their first album. But some of the members of Eagles, particularly John Henley and Glenn Fry, were less enthused with this. Whether the Eagles were country or rock, that would be an ongoing discussion within and without the band. Uh, however, the answer to that question would ultimately be up to Don Henley and Glenn Fry, who were really hitting their stride as songwriters. Uh, as their skills progressed between this album and the next, Ledden and Meisner started spending more time watching from the sidelines, really. Now, in their defense, Henley stated that he and Fry felt justified in taking center stage. 
as he told Rolling Stone back in 75, we didn't want any filler, no stinkers. Desperado is basically a conceptual album, although to what degree is the subject of a lot of debate. The through line, though, is an Old West cowboy culture theme. I'll elaborate uh, on that one in a minute, but actually the LP's origins really grew out of the Eagles' love of the Wild West. You know, the outlaws and gunslingers, especially their portrayals on 1950s television as they were growing up and watching this on the boob tube. Another likely spark for the idea also came before the Eagles existed as a band. Danger-ridden trails with a savage vengeance that followed him even to the top of the world. Jackson Brown and Ned Dohany, uh, members of the band's songwriting circle, they gave Glenn Fry a Wild West photo book as a present one time. Uh, the book featured stories of famous outlaws, including one about Bill Dalton and Bill Doolin, which of course became a song. Doolin Dalton. Glenn was captivated by this. He saw in these stories a connection between his own life as a struggling musician and these bandits who lived outside the law. These parallels would later come into focus as Eagles began writing their sophomore offering. It was pretty rare for a young group like Eagles to propose a concept album for their second record. Also, it was pretty bold. But then again, the Eagles weren't just anybody, not even in their early years. Glenn and Don, they were ambitious and highly creative. Even so, they were very fortunate to get the go-ahead for their idea. A part of the reason why they got this uh, leeway was because their debut album had really exceeded Asylum's expectations. So although not everyone at the label was thrilled with the idea, the Eagles concept that was met with only minimum pushback. Glenn Fry and Don Henley for their part regarded Desperado as their own statement of independence. Professionally, that meant independence from having to produce hit singles. And in broader terms, it means escaping from the nine to five lifestyle. As the two songwriters explored this concept, it became clear that they genuinely believed that as rock stars, they were modern day gunslingers. They were risk takers. They were outlaws. And you know what? They even have the photo shoot to prove it. The photos to prove it. Uh, when David Geffen realized the marketing potential behind this concept, you know, his country rock upstarts had devised, he got behind it all the way. He even bankrolled the album's expensive artwork. For it, Asylum rehired the art team of Diltz and Burden, uh, who had actually worked on the Eagles' debut album, and they turned Henley and Fry and Meisner and Ledden into legitimate desperados, or at least they made them look the part. The front cover features the band dressed as no-nonsense mavericks, and then there's the back cover, it shows them on the losing end of a shootout. To get the shots, uh, Diltz and Burden, they drew the Eagles crew to the Paramount Ranch. That was an old movie Western set in Malibu Canyon. Now on the way, they rented authentic costumes and thousands of rounds of blank ammunition. Said the photographer Diltz about it. The gear they got really could have been worn by John Wayne because it came from the same rental place that supplied all the big movies. The band loved those clothes so much that they refused to return a lot of them, which must have cost David Geffen. Actually, the band got so into character that one mock gunfight produced enough smoke to actually frighten neighbors nearby, who actually called the fire department. Multiple fire trucks quickly arrived on the scene, expecting to put out a major fire. Uh, in the end, Diltz brought some serious authenticity to what was essentially a bunch of rock stars pretending to be Old West outlaws. You know, but as good as the images on the record are, they only hint at sonic mastery awaiting within. As we get into the rest of this, I do want to thank our sponsor. As we go into this interview, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the glasses I wear every day on this channel, and uh, you should wear them too. If you go to zenny.com, you can design your own look and add amazing features like blue blocks that protect your eyes from digital blue light, uh, that we run into every day with our screens. See for yourself, zenny.com. You're going to dig it. Why don't you come to your senses? These guitar-wielding, gun-slinging rockers, they put together an iconic album for the ages. Featured a cachet of rebellion-inspired tracks like Doolin Dalton, 21, today's featured song Desperado, and the album's two singles, Tequila Sunrise and Outlaw Man. 
And all the record took just four weeks to finish at a cost of 30,000 pounds. Ironically, it was disciplined work. And the band turned in weekday office hours to get this done. Though they may have been writing about outlaws for the album, uh, their producer, Johns, had his own strict set of rules for them to follow in the studio. So outlaws in every aspect, except for the way they produced the album. Desperado hit the shelves in uh, April of 73, and though it only reached number 41 on the Billboard 200, artistically, it was a triumph. The group was immensely proud of this result. And uh, though producer Glenn Johns would blame Asylum, you know, for lax promotion, in the long run, things worked out pretty well. Desperado ultimately went double platinum in the U.S., really is a, a seminal album, and no doubt, uh, one of the band's finest moments. But of course, a few years later, it would be part of the Greatest Hits album, and a major reason why that thing sold almost 40 million copies and is the biggest selling album in, in American history. But perhaps the real success is what the album did, what it set out to do. The material really does bridge the lives of these 20-something rock and roll upstarts with those gritty gunslingers from a century prior. So long now, oh, you're a hard one. As for today's song, Don Henley actually began writing Desperado clear back in the 60s when he was a teenager. Though at that point, its theme wasn't really solidified. Said Henley about it, Desperado was a song fragment that I'd had since the late 60s. I started that song. It wasn't even called Desperado. It was called something else. But it had the same melody, same chords. Whatever the title was back then, it was horrible. End of quote. Reportedly, Jackson Brown played a role in Desperado's creation. Aside from giving Glenn Fry that book of outlaws, uh, Brown suggested that the song could center on a Western theme. Maybe something to do with, you know, playing cards. Western was the direction the Eagles were wanting to take the album anyway. So Don Henley and Glenn Fry, they went with that idea. Just a little more detail about the song's creation here. Uh, Henley said that after finishing their first album in England, he and Glenn got together at his house in Laurel Canyon, and Don played the unfinished song for him there. Glenn was all over it. Henley told Fry, when I play it and I sing it, I think of Ray Charles, like Ray Charles and Stephen Foster. It's really a Southern Gothic thing, but we can easily make it more Western. But I know that you got your reasons. Glenn jumped right on and he filled in the blanks and he mapped out the structure of the song. That was the beginning of one of the most talented songwriting partnerships in history. A Desperado was the first song that they would actually write together. The first of many. In Henley's words, that's when we became a team. These things that are pleasing you. Now, Fry had similar memories. Additionally, he remembered the moment that Don sat down at the piano and he played Desperado's intro. He said that originally, Don had written it for a friend named Leo. And the song started out with the line, and I quote, Leo, my God, why don't you come to your senses? You've been out riding fences for so long now. But, you know, as they began to work in the themes of anti-heroes and outlaws, it transformed into Desperado. Why don't you come to your senses? Desperado. Actually, guitarist Randy Miser claimed that he came up with a guitar intro, very iconic. However, he wasn't given a songwriting credit on the song, which also meant no royalties. Songwriting credit would prove to be a sore point for Randy Meister and later add to the turmoil uh, to a band who would have more than enough to go around. Now, when it came time to record Desperado, Don Henley, he was a nervous wreck. Now, for a little context, Glenn Johns was keeping to a, a fairly tight budget for this album. And because of that, he only gave Don Henley a couple of takes to sing this title track. He had to nail it. Henley has gone on record multiple times saying that he felt like that he could have sung it a lot better 
had he had been given you know more chances also adding to the stress though don was being backed up by the london philharmonic orchestra and when i say backed up i mean literally they were sitting directly behind him as he was singing also he was sure that at least some of them had previously played with the beatles at abbey road don't you feel said Henley about it. I was standing in this huge room, Island Studios, big orchestra right behind me, and they were bored to tears. Some older gentlemen had brought chess boards and they would play between takes. I would hear all these remarks like, well, you know, I don't feel much like a desperado. <laughs> Ouch. According to Henley, he was intimidated and because of it, he didn't sing his best and yet the rest of us, we don't feel that way. I don't. Henley's vocals are so impressive on the song. I mean, many consider it the definitive vocal performance of, uh, of his career with the Eagles. I, I'd say it's in his top 10. You better let somebody love you. I mean, Don Henley is a master of his craft, no doubt about it. He was and is a perfectionist, always striving to lay down his best possible performance. On the surface, Desperado, it's about a cowboy who refuses to fall in love. And certainly it is that, but there are more layers to this masterpiece as well. I mean, especially when you consider the connecting theme of uh, rock and roll and outlaws that the Eagles crafted the album around, really. Taken from this perspective, Desperado is about a young man, you know, a musician, who joins a band, pays his dues, and suffers for his art. Fry would later say, Desperado is essentially the story of what happened to us from the time we got together, to dealing with life on the road and living outside the laws of normality. Desperado. As I mentioned earlier, Eagles released both Tequila Sunrise and Outlaw Man as singles from the album, but Desperado never got that distinction. It just stayed purely an album cut. However, a few months after the Eagles released uh, Desperado, the album, Linda Ronstadt uh, recorded her own cover version of the song for her 1973 LP, Don't Cry Now. Although Ronstadt's uh, Desperado wasn't released as a single either, it did showcase the song to a much wider, primarily female audience, which ultimately helped to create buzz around the song and set it on a trajectory to become the timeless classic that it is. Desperado. Said Don Henley about it, I was extremely flattered that Linda recorded Desperado. It, uh, it was really her that popularized the song. Her version was very poignant, very beautiful. As with so many trailblazing pieces of art, Desperado, the song and the album were so far ahead of their time. I mean, the song grew up on FM radio in America and around the world. And perhaps surprisingly, Eagles' sophomore record never stopped selling, all of which gave this incredible track even more notoriety. Ain't it funny how the feeling goes? Also, Desperado's inclusion, like I said before, on Eagles' massively successful 1976 Greatest Hits record, that's contributed to the song's popularity with uh, almost 40 million records sold in the U.S. alone. Eagles, their greatest hits, 1971 to 1975, now stands as the biggest ever. It actually surpassed Michael Jackson's Thriller uh, a few years back. No doubt the legacy of that album has given Desperado massive exposure as well, but really helped to sell those 40 million copies because it was a lesser known track that people wanted. Since Desperado's early days, the song has appeared in multiple movies and TV shows, including Wonder Years, In America, and Young Rock. You, you better let somebody love you. And notably, Desperado also plays a leading role in the 1996 Seinfeld episode, The Checks. In it, uh, Lane's new boyfriend is hypnotized every time he hears this song, and he won't let her speak until it's finished. What is it? Is there someone outside? I ain't the song. Oh. 
Elaine explains to Jerry, he's just in his own world when he hears that song. It's like I'm sitting there in the car and he's out riding fences. <laughs> really funny episode. Could you just not talk for one minute? Now, to solve the situation with her boyfriend, Elaine proposes that they share a different Eagles song, which became Witchy Woman. But that turns out to be a no-go. I mean, let's be honest. Once you've gone desperado, you can't go back. You can never go back. See how high she flies. In addition to Linda Ronstadt, uh, Desperado has also been covered by several other artists, including Kenny Rogers. Carpenters, Bonnie Ray Ringo star Neil Diamond. Desperado. Tori Amos did it. The feeling go. Europe, Susie Quattro, George Michael, a Melissa Etheridge, Billy Joel, Carrie Underwood. Desperado. Johnny Cash. Why don't you come to your senses? And probably the, the definitive version outside of Eagles version, uh, Clint Black's version. Desperado. Now, fittingly, Desperado was also the last song that Eagles performed in concert with Glenn Fry. It closed out their show in uh, Louisiana on July 29, 2015. It was the last stop on their history at Eagles tour. Fry died about six months later. And if you really think about it, Desperado is Eagle's signature song. Now, for those jumping out of their seat with that last statement, uh, this band is so great. They have really three signature songs, Take It Easy, Hotel California, and Desperado. How many bands can say that? Take it easy. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Leave us a comment about Eagles and Desperado. What do you remember about this song? Uh, what are your memories of it? What do you think is the definitive version? I think it's Don Henley. Outside of Don Henley's version, what's the definitive version? Because there's several really great uh, covers of it. Uh, what do you think is the Eagles' signature song? Let's have a great discussion below. If you like our content, we do invite you to subscribe below. We'd love to have you as part of our daily music uh, history lesson, I guess you would say. Uh, until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Talk to you soon.